let's have a lesson on this piece. Um, if you already have the piece in another book, that's great. But if you don't, um, it's in my Easy Classical Guitar, Volume 1. I've been updating the uh, video lessons for the ebook um, in preparation for the release of Volume 2. So there's a link for that under the video. But watch the video for free and pick up lots of tips and ideas about um, approaching this piece and maybe approaching other pieces that you're working on right now. So the first thing I want to talk about is just um, a couple of little fingering options um, and why we might choose one over the other. And then we'll, we'll pretty much just do a walkthrough of the piece and I'll mention things as they occur. Um, before you start practicing the piece, you probably just want to go over the melody, the upper voice. Um, this piece is kind of rhapsodic, um, more than just like purely melodic, but nevertheless, that upper voice, you can practice it on its own. Just to, to make sure that you have um, some phrasing ideas and that everything is legato and whatnot. And then you can add the rest of the notes in and just keep that melody high quality. Now that opening passage, there's a couple of ways we could finger the music in the left hand. I've been doing a fourth finger guide finger just to bring you down into first position. Um, this is from an easy classical guitar book, um, so I think most players using the book are going to be really comfortable down here and less comfortable in upper positions. So because that first note is a quarter note, you can get away with playing it and then using that finger as a guide finger and just going down to first position. And then again. Um, another option though, if you want to try this out, you could start in fifth position. And instead of playing the G in third position, you could go, sorry, G, F. So A, G, F. G on the second string, F on the second string as well. A on the first string. And then open, and then you would carry on. And smooth because of that open string, right? So those are your two options, but I think for this piece it's just fine to use a guide finger there, especially because it starts on a quarter note. Whenever you have a, a longer rhythm, that's an appropriate place to shift because you can get some sustain out of the note first and get that note out into the room and then make your shift just nice and efficient to cover up any gaps in the, in the legato. Okay, um, but that's pretty much the only spot where I would like suggest um, experimenting with the fingering, but um, you can just follow the one that I've outlined in the book. So let's do a walkthrough of this piece. So a good thing to do is just mute that bass when you get to the second bar. Let it ring. Play that A, just mute that with your thumb. And you can observe the rests in this piece just by covering up the notes. I do it with my left hand just because there's so many notes ringing, but you could just place your right hand back on the strings. Sometimes there's like sympathetic vibrations on other strings though, so I sometimes use my left hand as well. shifts just make sure that your thumb is moving along with your hand um, don't let your thumb drag behind and don't confuse positions of the guitar just let your arm just move your whole hand up that way you can keep a good hand position the whole time rather than kind of like altering your hand position and getting into funky shapes with the hand so in the fingering for that bar there the triplet um, I would do PIA followed by M, A. And just use your thumb for all the bass notes. Um, I think it works out really well. So P, I, A, M, A, and then just carry on. Play this F with your second finger so that you can get the next chord. 
careful of the fingering here. The right hand fingering. You could use your thumb on all the bass notes or all the lower voice, like the B, A. But then you, the problem is you'd have to change here to get this G sharp. So I recommend using M, A, I, A, I, A, and then switch to your thumb because there's no more of those bass notes. So essentially, it's like an arpeggio pattern where these fingers are on the top three strings, so I on three, M on two, and A on E, and then you're just kind of playing an arpeggio style. But then you can switch to the thumb when you get to the fourth string. Just make sure you're bringing those notes out. So every quarter note beat. And then you're back to that opening passage. Use your thumb for all those lower notes. But continue alternating your fingers on the upper notes, just so that it doesn't get too noty there. It will be uh, it'll be a little bit noty regardless because of, of the inclusion of two voices, but you can reduce it by alternating the fingers. As long as it has like a shape to it and it's fairly legato, it'll sound pretty smooth. straightforward piece but it's um it's exciting and it can be kind of um it moves around on the guitar a little bit and there's lots of varied sections to it so you may have to practice each section on its own just to get the technique under control but then once you have that you'll find the piece pretty straightforward <laughs>